I guess I'd like to start with a, with a little story. I was in a meeting not long ago uh, with one of the patriarchs of the Boston business community, a gentleman named Larry Fish. Larry is a very highly respected banker uh, in Boston, and if you were to uh, stand in his office, you'd see all the trappings that prove it, as wood paneled walls, oriental rugs, spectacular views of the 50, uh, from the 55th floor of Boston Harbor in the city of Boston, pictures with all kinds of recognizable dignitaries like heads of state and celebrities and sports stars and the like. But upon greeting me, the first thing Larry says to me is, I see you're from Kansas State. And he proceeded to tell me about a tradition he has where he and a couple of lifelong buddies go to a big time college football game every year. And they've been doing this for 30 years, each time to a different place. So as you can imagine, he's seen some pretty good college football games. You know, he's been to South Bend and Ann Arbor and Austin and Tuscaloosa, Tallahassee, the whole list. But after describing all of this, Larry told me one of his favorite places to see a football game was Manhattan, Kansas. And he started doing this, saying, I love the Wabash Cannonball. To this day, he says it's still the best song in college football. Because you see, he was one of those 53,800 people that night that saw us beat Nebraska in the snow in November of 2000. So after we talked a little football, Larry then told me that he sits on the board of overseers for the prestigious Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. And he told me that MIT benchmarks itself against the Kansas State University College of Engineering. So I'm sitting here thinking, here's this 65-year-old distinguished gentleman from Boston who has absolutely no shortage of great experiences to be bragging about, and he is waxing on about a football game he saw 12 years ago in Manhattan, Kansas, the Wabash Cannonball, and our College of Engineering. Well, by the time Larry uh, was finished telling me all of this, I was, of course, just bursting with pride. And then, of course, having been completely buttered up, he took complete advantage of me in the negotiation that followed. <laughs> I mean, you, you don't become a patriarch of the Boston business community by being stupid. However, I do think he was sincere in his respect and admiration for all things Kansas State. But I think I believed him so much because I have such fond memories myself. I mean, I remember my first K-State football game, and it was in September of 1967, the last season in the old stadium when we played Virginia Tech. I was only seven years old at the time, but I do have a couple of specific memories of that day. So I have a snapshot in my mind Maybe you guys have similar snapshots from your childhood, just a fleeting kind of memory. But the stadium in my mind that day was hot and crowded and noisy and very colorful. I don't remember who won, but the sports information department here tells me that Virginia Tech won 15 to three, which kind of makes sense. I think our opponents won most games back in those days. The other thing I remember was after the game, our family piling into the family station wagon and driving out north to see the, uh, the new uh, stadium being built. You know, again, as a seven-year-old, uh, I didn't think much about it. I only remember this big hole being dug in the ground and thinking it was pretty cool that we were gonna build a stadium out of a hole. That's my brother and me after the Virginia Tech game looking at that big hole. The following year, our family did go to that first game, the 21 to nothing win over Colorado State. And I remember Cornelius Davis scored all three touchdowns that day. And after, after the game, my mom and dad took my brother and me over to the athletic depart or over the athletic dorm. It's no longer an athletic dorm. It's across the street from the vet school over on Denison, uh, where we were lucky enough to score Cornelius Davis's autograph in the parking lot that day. So other than thinking it was pretty cool to build a stadium out of a hole, I really didn't give uh, that stadium much more thought after that day, and in fact, I hadn't thought about the stadium much more since then, not until Chad Weiberg uh, asked me to come speak at this event, and it was then that I started to think, you know, who made the decision to build this stadium in the first place? You know, what, what did they think about when they did that? How were they gonna pay for it? You know, what in the world were they thinking? I mean, that generation of K-State football fan didn't have anywhere near as much to think about as we do. 
they didn't have 15 bowl games uh, uh, to their credit. In fact, they didn't have a single one. They had only won one conference championship up to that point, a Big Six title in 1934. But they had never really been contenders at the national level. I don't think they ever even dreamed they'd have Heisman Trophy candidates playing for their team. And when they built that stadium, did they think we'd beat Oklahoma and Nebraska here? Did they think we'd beat USC here? Or that we would own the University of Texas here? <laughs> I mean, it must have required a huge leap of faith to build this very first stadium here. So here's how I think about the project we're now undertaking. There is no leap of faith required to build this project. Under the leadership of Kirk Schultz and John Curry, we have confidence and we have vision, but it's not based on any leap of faith. We now have the, re the real deal. We now have a university, that, a university that has already built the scaffolding for this project by instilling in all of us a, a, a true sense of pride in both our school and our athletic program. We have future Hall of Fame coaches who have dedicated their lives to this program, finding ways to win against much bigger schools with much larger athletic budgets. We have players who have given us their all, not only on the field of play, but also in the classroom, in the community, where they always serve as some of this university's most able ambassadors. And we have alumni who have traveled by the tens of thousands to places like Shreveport and Tucson and San Diego and Tempe and New York City and Dallas, in each case, adding to the positive impression of K-State held by the rest of the nation. But there's one last thing we have to do, and that is finish this stadium. And this time, we are going to build it to the sky. Now, at this point, I had planned uh, uh, to, to talk about and conclude with this very noble thought about generational responsibility. You know, that we owe the past generation of K-Stater who started this project uh, and that we owe the future generations of K-Staters to leave them something that they can then build upon the way that generation did for us. But after last night's auction, I actually reached a different conclusion. When, when I went home from the auction and I started reading my speech about generations, you know, generations are kind of this faceless, nameless, abstract concept. But last night, I saw faces of K-State fans who had real names, all ages, all generations, all here because we want to be here, all here because we love Kansas State, all here because we love being with each other. This is not about generational responsibility or some higher calling like I originally thought 24 hours ago. That will naturally happen. It happened with this generation transferring this stadium uh, to us. I think we should build this stadium for us. You know, John and Kirk, John and Kirk, you, you, you talk about providing the best fan experience in the Big 12, and I salute you for doing it. Please keep doing it. Love what you're doing. Hang in there. But my conclusion from last night was that we make the fan experience. It's those of us in the room. It's those of us in the auction last night. We've been doing it for the last 45 years. We did it last night. We're going to do it today. And can you imagine, if you think this is a good day for Kansas State football, can you imagine what it will be like August 31st, 2013, when we walk into that stadium for the very first time? It will be an absolute blast. So I'm very proud to be part of this fan experience. I'm very proud to be part of this project. And I hope all of you can join me in contributing to both. Thank you.